One of the problems that I see with online classes is that it's difficult to create engagement with your audience. It often feels like a one-way feed of information. I have found that creating quizzes with Microsoft Forms helps to boost engagement, whether you're teaching a webinar or a classroom full of students. Let's navigate to Microsoft Forms and take a look at how we can create a quiz. From the Forms homepage, you have two options at the top, a new form, which is commonly called a survey, or a new quiz. If you click on new quiz from the homepage, this is automatically going to be associated with your OneDrive and you will be the only one who can manage this quiz. If you want to have multiple owners for the quiz, you can associate it with a group. So if I click on this webinars group, you'll see that here we have a, an option for new group quiz and everyone who is an owner of this group can then help you manage it. For today, we're going to simply go with a personal quiz. Now I have talked about forms before in a different video and I'll link that below that goes into more details. So for quizzes, we're just gonna cover the basics. You're gonna to wanna to give your quiz a unique name and then you can start adding questions. So when you click add new, it gives you a few options for commonly used questions. And if you click this drop down arrow, you will see additional options. For this first question, I am going to go with multiple choice and start entering the answers. As I type, Forms is evaluating what I'm entering and will try to offer suggestions that match the detected pattern. It's not always 100% accurate, but in this case, it picked up that I'm talking about Microsoft Apps. I selected those options to speed up the Forms creation process. The next thing you're going to want to do is pick the correct answer. In this case, that would be Planner. Now towards the bottom, you will see an option to assign points to the question. You can leave it blank or you can give a points value. For this demonstration, I'm just going to say five points for answering this question correctly. Then on the bottom toolbar, you will also see some additional toggle buttons for, is this a math question? Do you want to allow multiple answers or is this question required? In this case, the only one I need to toggle is make this a required question. I'm going to add a new question and this time I'm going to go to the drop down arrow and choose ranking, which can be a popular type of quiz question. In this example, I want people to put the steps for starting a quiz in the correct order. While creating the quiz, it is important to put the answers in the correct order so that Forms knows what a correct answer looks like. When the responder sees the question, the choices will be in a random order. Notice that the question is assigned five points and it is required. This is because whatever you chose for the first question carries over to the next one, but you can change your choice for each question. Let's make this one worth eight points. Let's look at one more question so that we can also take a look at some additional options. So we're gonna go with the choice question again. I'm gonna copy and paste in the question and then give the option. So in this case, it's gonna be true or false. And Forms is picking up on the fact that false should be the follow-on answer since I typed in true. In this case, false is the correct answer. Notice at the end of the question, there's a bubble icon. This allows you to enter a message for the responder to see after the quiz has been submitted. The last thing I'm going to do is change this to a five point question. And then you will keep building your quiz based on your business process. I would like to draw your attention to the upper right corner. Forms is offering us a tip saying that we should add a description to the quiz. If you click add, a generic statement will be added to the description box. You can modify it or type something that makes sense to you. Speaking of modifying things, the next thing I like to do is change the style of the form. When you click style, you can choose from some AI generated backgrounds or choose a color. I like to change mine because people get so many generic forms that I know some of my coworkers start ignoring them. But when a form has a style that stands out from the rest, I have better response rates. Now that we've applied our style, let's go to the upper right hand corner and click the three dots for more form settings. Then choose settings from the menu. There are multiple choices here that will allow you to customize the quiz experience. As we talk about the settings, I will point out a few things that people often ask questions about. 
The first option at the top of the settings pane is show results automatically. This will allow responders to see their results and their correct answers as soon as they submit the quiz. Now, if they get an answer wrong, it's not going to show them the correct answer. It's just going to show that they got it wrong. In the who can fill out this form section, you can choose to let anyone respond or only people in your organization. The one setting I would like to point out is the one response per person, which is on by default. If you would like people to have the option to submit the quiz again and try to get more answers correct, this needs to be deselected. In this example, I do want people to have more than one attempt at the quiz. In the options for response section, we have several choices here. By default, all forms and quizzes accept responses immediately. You can choose a start date or an end date so that people can only submit responses to your quiz during a specified time. If anyone tries to submit a response outside of that time frame, they will be given a message that says that the form is currently unavailable. Another popular option for quizzes is to set a time duration. If this is selected, a timer is applied to the quiz and the default is 30 minutes. However, you can adjust that time to fit your scenario. If we scroll down a bit further, there's an option to allow respondents to edit their responses. As mentioned a few moments ago, if you want people to have multiple chances to submit the quiz and correct prior answers, this needs to be turned on as well. Now, the last option that is pretty popular is allow receipt of responses after submission. After completing the form, respondents will have the option to save or print a PDF of the form with their answers from the thank you page. I am going to turn off the start and end date so that we can test the form. Now go to the preview button in the toolbar at the top of the screen. This will give you the form author, an idea of what the responders will see and let you enter your own responses. I will click on start now and quickly enter the answer for this quiz and intentionally get one of them wrong. Choose if you want an email receipt and then click submit. After the confetti screen, the responder will see their score, the option to view results, save responses to edit and print responses. In this example, we're going to save the responses so we can try and get a perfect score. As the forms responder, you can go to the forms homepage and you will see a version of the form that says filled form. Select that option and then choose view responses. Scroll through the quiz to see which ones you answered correctly and which one was wrong. Then go back to the top of the page and choose edit responses. I got the last question wrong, so let's change that answer. Then click submit to finalize the process of editing your responses. Now we have our perfect score. Let's put the form creator hat back on and look at the responses received. Choose the original form we created and go to the responses tab in the toolbar on the left side of the screen. Here you will see how many responses were received and some aggregated details of those responses. To see the individual responses, click on review answers. At the top of the answer section, notice the little bubble icon. This will allow you to put a message to the person who answered the quiz. This one is an overall response for the whole quiz. If you scroll down to a specific answer, you will see another bubble icon and you can give specific feedback for just that answer. After we post the scores, the responder can go back to the URL for the quiz and see your feedback. But how do we post the scores, you may ask? Go back to the Responses tab and click Post Scores. On this page, you will see that I made three attempts at this quiz. You can post all of the scores or just one. In this example, I'm just going to choose the first one and click on Post Scores. If you go down to Preview, this will show you a copy of what the responder will see when they return to the quiz. And just to close the loop, I've logged in as Nestor and I'm going to paste the URL at the top of the screen. And here you can see that Nestor has the exact same view we saw a moment ago. So that's about it when it comes to quizzes and Microsoft Forms. 
If you want to learn more about forms and surveys, check out the video that's on the screen now, and I'll see you over there.